let's solve linear inequalities. And so we're talking about our linear inequalities, and this is very similar to solving equations, in that we're going to talk, talk about and use equivalent inequalities. And an equivalent inequality is one that shares the same answer exactly. And we've talked about interval notation before, and most of the time we're going to want to answer that, but there's four different types of answers. There's the inequality notation, which is what we're going to solve for. There's a graph. There's set builder notation, which we'll introduce today. And there's interval notation. And so you need to be careful that you're answering the right way. Most of the time we'll be answering an interval notation, but a few times the homework's going to want set builder notation. And it's very easy to get from the inequality notation. Now, as we're talking about equivalent inequalities, we need to talk about two properties. The addition property and the multiplication property. And the multiplication property is a little bit tricky, so we'll start with it. Suppose that I have A is greater than B, and I want to multiply both sides by C. So I'm going to get A times C and B times C. But there's a catch because of the fact that we're dealing with signs, we need to make sure that we still point to the bigger one. So if C is positive, then it stays the same. It started as a greater than, it becomes a greater than. But if A times C and B times C, with the C being negative, it switches directions and we get AC is less than BC. And that works with the OR equals as well. And the same thing happens with our less than. If C is positive, it stays as a less than. However, if C is negative, it becomes a greater than. It's very important to keep this rule straight. We'll show an example of it in just a minute. For the addition, though, as long as what I'm adding is the same, it always stays the same. Whether it's a positive, or whether it's a less than, or a greater than, it stays the same. So with these properties in mind, let's work through a couple of examples. Let's start with 3x minus 2 is bigger than 13. We'll use the addition property to add 2 to both sides. 3x is bigger than 15 divide by 3, and notice that 3 is positive. Because it's positive, when we do our division, we leave the inequality the same. x is bigger than 5. So here's our inequality notation. x is all by itself. We have our answer. To do set builder, we simply add a vertical line to the left of the x, put an x by itself, and then surround it by our set braces. And this is read all values of x such that x is bigger than 5. And this now is our set builder notation. Our graph, of course, we have to mark our 0. And we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we just we recognize it's a greater than. So we're going to be going to the greater than symbol on the graph. So we'll shade that way. And then at 5, we put a parenthesis and we get our graph. And of course, our interval notation we can take straight from the graph. Parenthesis, parenthesis, starts at 5, shading ends at infinity. And we have our answer. As a, another example, just to show... What happens with the negative? We always want our x's on the left, so we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And we're going to subtract 3 from both sides so that we can get all the pieces the same. x minus 3x is minus 2x is less than, because we use the addition property. 3x minus 3x goes to 0. Minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10. Now when we divide by a negative 2, because negative 2 is negative, 
the less than becomes a greater than. We get the x by itself. And negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. And we get the same answer as last time. We still mark our 0. We go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We put our parentheses there. We shade towards the greater than sign to get our graph. Our interval notation answer is 5 to infinity. And our set builder notation is the set of all x such that x is greater than 5. Now, my math lab, even if it asks for set builder notation, usually just wants you to fill in this box right here. And one more point before we move on. Please recognize that our two problems that we've just done, because they have the same answer set, these happen to be equivalent inequalities as well.